Well, a shocking revelation out of the nation's capital. Lawyers for former President Donald Trump believe that Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas was key in the bid to delay President Joe Biden's victory in the 2020 election. This, according to emails recently handed over to the January 6th committee. Our Washington correspondent Cassie Simeon joins us outside the Supreme Court this morning. Cassie, good morning. Break down the context of this email and what are the possible repercussions here? Well, Giselle, in one of those emails, this one right here, dated December 31st, 2020, it's correspondence between Trump lawyers Kenneth Cheesebro and John Eastman. Cheesebro writes, quote, realistically, our only chance to get a favorable judicial opinion by January 6th, which might hold up the Georgia count in Congress, is from Thomas. Do you agree, Professor Eastman? To which Eastman does agree. Now, these emails were first reported by Politico, and they're just another chapter in the ongoing saga for Clarence and Ginny Thomas and their entanglement with former President Donald Trump. Thomas is the justice tasked with reviewing emergency orders from Georgia, which is why this case would have been in his purview if an appeal went to the Supreme Court. Now, last month, Ginny Thomas went before the January 6th committee testifying that she still believes the 2020 election was stolen, but she keeps saying that her election activities were separate from her husband's work as a justice. Ginny corresponded with Eastman, who's a former clerk of Justice Thomas, through email about election results and trying to overturn them in Arizona. Arizona and Wisconsin. And while she's not on this email in particular, the Cheesebro Eastman emails are just another connection tying the attempts to overturn the election results to Justice Thomas. One legal expert I spoke with say it's an alarming sign that the court is entangled in this issue and furthers the evidence that our democracy is in danger. Take a listen. We see that in countries around the world where the judiciary has just become another tool of autocratic leaders. And, you know, unfortunately, what we're seeing in the United States is a similar pattern where the court itself um, seems to be inclined to, to um, uh, help facilitate these kinds of illiberal efforts, uh, efforts to undermine elections. Uh, and the role of Justice Thomas has been um, uh, significant in that regard, and particularly um, the fact that he has not stepped back from these election cases in which his wife is, um, is implicated um, and that he has been come increasingly to be seen as a source of support for those who are trying to undermine our fair uh, and free elections. And Giselle, again, while Ginny and Clarence Thomas are not listed on this email, it just further sows distrust in the court, especially when it comes to issues about January 6th and bipartisanship, because the court, again, is supposed to be a non-biased body, and Clarence Thomas has ruled against January 6th committee obtaining sorts of documents that have been being reviewed in the court system thus far. So it's very interesting to see his name in these emails, what the repercussions are remains to be seen. Yeah, this is the Kai Court suffers the worst approval ratings in its history amongst the American public. Before I let you go, I do want to ask you about the all-important midterms now just days away. President Joe Biden warning the nation last night in a national address that it can no longer take our democracy for granted. House Minority Leader then came back, Kevin McCarthy, saying it's just an effort to divide and deflect. Cassie, is the president's message gaining any traction? Well, this is definitely an issue that we've seen in polls saying that voters are very concerned about the state of our democracy. The timing is interesting here because he gave this speech last night with six days out until the election. And it comes at a time when candidates are really trying to distance themselves from the president because he has low approval ratings. We've seen other surrogates hitting the campaign trail, including the first lady, the vice president, Barack Obama. But the president himself has been hitting the campaign trail less and less because there is sort of that distance being created from the candidate and the president. So it's interesting to see how this message will play out because there is early voting already going on in the states. Will it resonate or will there be a red wave next week? It's unclear at this point. Yeah, it's a nail biter for sure and so much on the line. Cassie Simeon reporting live from the nation's capital. Thank you.